He said he was a member of Parliament, and so I trusted him. He told me he wished me to meet another member, his member for love. He locked the door. I pleaded for my maidenhood, but... The words are commonplace, but observe the frontispiece. Show them, Maud. The execution of the member for love. Hmm? The delicate rendering of the crimson tip. Done after borrow, very rare. I had it as a young man at a stall in Liverpool. Thank you, Maud. For a shilling. I would not part with it now for 50 pounds. But having slipped the bolt of the door... A curator of poisons, so my uncle described himself to me. I was 12 years old when he began inoculating me with poison, grain by grain, scruple by scruple, so I should be immune to what I read, be his librarian, and, when he lost his sight, his eyes. So they came together. The romance may have been somewhat unusual, but that gave it all the charm of the unexpected. And there, as the red sun tinges the sky and the chatter of birds heralds the coming night, we must leave them. You don't care for your uncle's subjects? I'm a secretary. It's a matter of total indifference to me. Oh, I find it rather curious to find a lady so cool and unmoved by something designed to um, stir the emotions. Most ladies in those books and paintings seem to me to be singularly unmoved by it. <laughs> you are very uncommon, Miss Lily. So I understand, sir. I know nothing of what I read from those books, sir. I've not come for that, Miss Lily. You can get that in any street corner. I'm here to help you. How much do you think you receive when you marry? A few hundred. Forty thousand pounds. Who told you such nonsense? Poetry. You're the talk of the shady bookshops in London and Paris. Your readings and the favours men imagine follow them. Your uncle is a villain, Miss Lily. And you are not. I came here to seduce you. Secure your fortune. But I saw what life has made of you, and I knew it wouldn't work. To a woman like you, it would be an insult. Instead, I want to free you. <laughs> You're very gallant, Mr. Evers. I suppose I don't care to be freed. I think you long for it. Go, please. Go. Good afternoon, Miss Lily. Good afternoon, Mr. Rivers. Will you marry me? How dare you? Well, he's lively today, isn't he, Mr. Rivers? Not as lively as me, Charles.
I swear I will not touch you after the ceremony. We will go our separate ways. Oh, why would you do such a thing? For half your fortune. I tell him his idea is nonsense. My uncle would pursue me. Not if he thinks you are in the madhouse, he whispers. But it would not be me who was locked up. His plan is to install a new maid, a compliant chaperone, a thief who will think she is cheating me. Instead, we will cheat her. She will take with her into the madhouse all the taint of my mother's madness, my uncle's filth, my very name. He is right. I would be free. I return to London in three days. I must secure the maid when I go back. We'll never have this chance again, will you? No. It would be foul, putting a girl in the madhouse. The girl's despicable, a thief. She would do it to you. My uncle will be here at any moment. You must not open that. You belong out there. Not locked up here with this filth! There was an obstacle to Mr. Rivers' plan. My maid, Agnes. The way he painted that fruit, miss, you could eat it. He has an eye for it. And for you, miss. Oh! Ah. Are you all right, Miss Lily? Oh. I think she may have twisted her ankle, sir. Really, Agnes, I have not. Oh, well, we must take no chance of that, Miss Lily. It is treacherous ground here. Allow me to assist you. Justice, Miss Agnes. Leave it to me. Agnes, every time I looked into her eyes, I was thinking of you. shaken by what we had done to Agnes. But my uncle had trained me too well to feel it for long. Mr. Rivers returned to London, recommending the new maid, whose character was as false as her curtsy. Here is the evil little fingersmith who is going to make us rich. Remember, she has to become you, and you her. You have one month until I return. Is it right, miss? Very satisfactory. She has come to Briar to swallow me up. Like a clutch of eggs. What do London ladies do this time of day? Make visits to other ladies. Like you, miss. Ladies like me? There are no ladies like me.
But I grew used to her, to her life, her warmth. She was not the gullible girl of a villainous plot, but a girl with a history, with hates and likings. Yet to escape from Briar, I must despise her, must deceive her. It's not bad news, is it, Miss? M Mr. Rivers is coming tomorrow. Oh, Lord! I must choose your dresses. For sure, I want you to have that. Me, miss, but this is your best dress. Well, I want to show Mr. Rivers that, that I do so much approve of you, of his choice. Oh, miss. <sighs> That's one of the nicest things anyone has ever said to me. Really, I can't. I can't, really. Sue. Miss, I... She looked so beautiful. I had to keep telling myself over and over again what she planned to do to me, to go on. Oh my goodness, miss. You look like a real lady. <laughs> She changed even my uncle's books for me. I thought them dead. But the words became suddenly alive, full of meaning. She must think we love one another. God damn it, Maud. There's another hour gone. In two days, I will leave, and I will never see you again. Wake her. She'll burn. Let go of me. I've lost heart for this. Oh, lost it to a wretched little fingersmith. Let me. She'd laugh in your face if she knew. If I told her. You mustn't. I'll I... agree. Do you want to stay here forever? Appear to love me. 
Marry me. I can't. Maud! Miss Maud! Miss Maud! Everything I say to myself has changed. She has touched the life of me. The quick of me. But she is ashamed. We'll be leaving here tonight, miss. She didn't love me. Her feelings were false, part of a trap. Why should I not trap her to escape from this foul place? The night I escaped, I needed to do one last thing.
How fast your heart beats, Maud. <laughs> I told you I don't want that. But we must show the marks of true love. Are you by any chance bleeding to save me the pain? Do you mean to insult me in every possible way? <laughs> Hold out the sheet. The fashionable couple on their wedding night. Sit down here, Susan. Miss Smith, were you ever a maid with Lady Stoneley of Mayfair? No, sir. <clears throat> And that's one of poor Mrs. Rivers' fancies. Ever since her wedding night, she's made up these stories. Fiction. Yes, yes. Does she read books? Her passion is books. Well, there you have it, Graves. The overexposure of women to literature breeds unnatural fancies. Indeed. Unnatural? Oh, well, sir, you don't know the worst of it. It's not your shame, Susan, your guilt. You did nothing to invite the gross attentions my wife, in her madness, tried to force on you. Is this true? <laughs> these, these tears speak for themselves. Oh, come, Susan. You're not to blame. I'm so sorry you were exposed to such horrible things. My own poor mistress. My heart was breaking. That is my story. That is what brought me here. You were very convincing, Maud. Don't speak to me or I shall kill you. I have betrayed her. Mrs. Rivers! <laughs> Sit, Mrs. Oh. Rivers, over there, if you will. You see? Steady, man. She may put out her joints. We will not have you lying here, Mrs. Rivers. You can choke yourself, and it's no business of ours. Chew your tongue off if you like. We prefer them quiet here. Welcome to London. Done this, Believe me, she'd be better taken care of than where she came from. Are we here? Is this our house? I thought for a moment that was the Briar Bell. We're near the river. Chelsea! Not quite. Where are we? Come on, or I shall leave you here.
cannot live grandly, Maud, until we have your money. You must wait for the lawyer to release it. Do you want to stay out here and freeze? Go on, get up. Mr. Reeves. Mrs. Maud Rivers. Very pleased to meet you, Mrs. Rivers. Do come in, make yourself at home. Can you manage a better night than this, Mr. Ibs? Oh, this is a very good night, gentlemen. A very good night, indeed. Let me take the lady's cloak. Oh, <laughs> I do beg pardon. Who's she? How much are you going to pop that for, Mr. Ribs? Richard. <laughs> Richard. alive was the thought that Mrs. Saxby would find me. And then I would find Maud and kill her. She lived here. So, didn't she? Will you stop touching me? What a fool I've been. What an idiot. This is Sue's house of thieves, isn't it? Honest thieves, dear. Get me a cab. Handsome or hackney. Don't you dare talk to me like that. Oh, she's got a dander, ain't she? If you don't get me a cab, I shall walk. I shall find a policeman. Never there when you want them, my dear. What in this fog? Come on. John! Use the bag! Gentlemen, Rich, throw it! Girl! <laughs> <laughs> That's enough! If you don't let me go, I will kill your baby. I have come too far for, for this. John! I mean it. I will. Get me a cab. I will do it. My dear, I've been caring for unwanted babies for years. The moment I'm looking after, Seven babies. Now you can make it six if you like, or five. No one would miss them. Come on. Uh. Seek the fire, John. Make some tea dainty. Strengthen it up a bit. Oh, go on, you hit the mark there, Betty. My poor hands have suffered so much recently. Mrs. Frobisher. Mrs. Frobisher. Oh, do what you try, my dear. Do you want the curb? Oh. Where are you from? Ara. Oh, I'm a little out of touch. And the season only just beginning. Are you out? No, I ain't. So young. I'm very much in. <laughs> in. <laughs> That's the first true word I've heard you say, Mrs. Rivers. In. <laughs> in. She's you in. You keep telling the truth like that, Mrs. Rivers, and you may well be out before the in. end of the season. I 
garden bear to wake you, dear. Feed the babies upstairs, dainty. Now, oh, come on now. I can see you're a spirited girl, but you can't imagine we mean you any harm. I can't imagine you mean me any kind of good when you insist on keeping me here when I so clearly wish to leave. Just hear the grammar in that, <laughs> Mr. Ibs. Here, let me take your glove. Our uncle taught her to be very particular about her fingers. Oh. Made you read a lot of filthy French books. Did he touch you, dear, where he oughtn't? Well, oh, never mind. Better your own than a stranger, I always say. I'll get you a nice cup of tea. You plan to kill me, don't you? It would mean nothing to me, but she would not allow it. What has she got to do with this? She sent me to Briar. This is her plan. She controls everything. How did she know about my fortune? From some servant. From her? You're liars. You're cheats. How could you know my mother? I was born in an asylum. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> We're not going to put that together again now, are we? No, you weren't born in the asylum, dear. You was born here. Marianne, that was the lady's name, wasn't it, dear? She ran away from Briar just like you did, only her gentleman didn't do the decent thing, not like your husband. She got my name from a woman in the borough that did girls and their complaints. And did she have a complaint, Mr. Ibs? Too far gone to get rid of the poor creature. She was terrified, poor lamb. As her father and brothers, your Uncle Lily, they was after her. So I, I made up a bed in front of the fire like I did for you. And she had her baby right here. Oh, how Marianne loved her little baby girl. Oh, poor little scrap. Then we heard it, didn't we? The carriage. Your uncle had found her. They was hammering at the door. And Marianne, she was sobbing. I must name her. I must. But not a name like the one I've been cursed with, but a plain name. I shall call her... Maud. Susan. This God is my witness. She cried. I don't want to put my baby through what I've been through. Take my baby, Susan. And bring her up yourself, Mrs. Suxby. Poor and honest, and she begged and pleaded, and it would have taken a heart of stone to refuse her. So, so before Mr. Ribs opened the door, I gave her the baby that I was holding, because she was born on the same day. Take her quick, I said. So your brother thinks she's yours. She has the name of a lady, after all. Her name is Maud. My name is Ethel. My name's... You must believe me. Susan. Susan. I believe you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a lot of comfort, Mrs Rivers. Miss Wilson believes there are creatures on the moon. Damn you! <laughs> I told you that in strength and confidence! <laughs> suppose this sherry, Miss Lily, sherry in a lady's chamber, I could never agree to her, but a bit of honest brandy is a bracer. Huh? 
got a good mouth for spirits. I know you're lying. No, you haven't heard anything yet, Maud. I'm an orphan. My mother was mad. Her pa and brother preferred the madhouse to shame. She went mad when they put her in there. I knew then I was mad. Only the maddest, whose brains were overheated, were given the plunge. I'm her husband. She'll do as I tell her. Shh. Leave it to me, gentlemen. We'll do it my way. She'll do it. Believe me. Well, I always say brandy is the best sleeping draught. Here. If Marianne wasn't my mother, then who was? God alone knows, dear. I took foundlings, you see, out of the goodness of my heart, and you was one of them. This is Sue's mother. Then, how do I have a fortune? Sit down. Marianne took pity on you. A poor foundling. Going to a lonely old place like Briar. There was plenty for both, she said. Poor might will need it. Wouldn't change her mind. She left half to you and half to her own daughter, Susan. Due on yours and Susan's 21st birthdays in one month's time. And you plan to get all of it? Oh, no, no. It's Mrs. Suxby's scheme. She gets the major share. I'll get a mere £3,000. Did Sue know what you planned? No, dear. You're not any villains. You're fools. I won't sign anything. And Sue's in no position to. <laughs> no, you're right. Sue, or, or, or should I say your poor mistress, my wife, Mrs. Rivers, is in no condition to sign for her share. I'll be forced to sign for her, thanks to your help. What have I done? Oh, oh. Damn you, I told you, keep away from me. Leave her! And what do you want with me? Well, we still have to collect Susan's half of the money. You want me to be Sue? Oh, she's sharp, Mr. Ibs. I don't believe you. It's because I'm nothing. I don't even know my name. After I sign, you plan to kill me, don't you? Oh, dear. You're one of us now. And you're a lady. See, you... You would be my companion. Because <laughs> I need a real lady like you to show me how to become one. See? <laughs> when you have money. <laughs> you're ridiculous. You should both be in the madhouse. Pass me off a zoo. Mr. Ribs will tell the lawyers he's known you all his life. She is your legal guardian. The doctors know you as a maid. You have no friends in London, no money, no name even. You, as you say, are nothing. And you will do as I say. I will tell the lawyer. <laughs> How you plotted to swindle an innocent girl. Are you truly so wicked? So vile? That is vile! Poverty! You think life is hard with money? You should try it without. It is one month before your 21st birthday. One week of borough living will help you make up your mind. Two weeks after the plunge, I was prepared to be anyone they wanted me to be. Only the thought of Mrs. Saxby kept me going. Mrs. Saxby used to say, people ain't never interested in the truth, Sue, but in what they want to hear. I am Mrs. Maud Rivers. This is truly remarkable. I've you to thank, Doctor, who've looked after me so well. 
You would like to see Mr. Rivers. To see him? Oh, my poor husband. And my maid. What? Who has put up with so much? How I long to see them both again. And so you shall. Dr. Graves. A little test, Mrs. Rivers. Please. Write your name. I think it begins with a different letter, doesn't it? Remarkable. The delusion even extends to her motor functions. It's there we will break her. Once your own writing comes back to you, your husband will be here to sign you out. Rivers! He has to sign me out. Rivers! I love the family Rivers! I thought about Sue every day. As Mrs. Suxby struck off the days to my 21st birthday. If only I could escape and get to Sue. There you are, Mrs. Rivers. Well done. Did you like her? So She turned out bad, didn't she? But I don't know. I miss her sometimes. She was fun. We used to have a good laugh. Is it? I don't feel very well. <laughs> you never do. Is that what they call a, a lady's constitution? I, I suppose it must... Oh! I need to go to the privy. Oh, I, I don't want to bother you. Oh, <laughs> it's no bother, madam. It will be if you're not here when Mrs S gets back. <laughs> Dainty. I'm really not well. Oh, come out then. It's my time of the... Oh, it rushes. I can't leave you. Oh. Oh. <gasps> Open the door. The men might come. Oh, but Mrs. Saxby told me not to leave you. Uh. Maud, please. What's happened? I need to go to a hotel. Come on. Rovner Street. Get up there. Go up. Go up.
Oh dear. Just look at you. Such pretty little feet and such finely turned ankles. Let me go. No, no. Help! Don't be silly. Help! I'm only trying to. I walked through the night, running away if anyone approached me. My thin slippers tore, and my feet were cut and bleeding before I found what I was looking for. The only street that I had heard of in London. The one my uncle's books came from. Miss, miss, you can't go in there. Mr. Hawtrey. Lord. Please help me. What are you doing here? You were always saying... That, that was at Briar, before what happened. You mustn't come here. You came through the shop. Did the police see you? I won't faint. I promise you. Your feet? Good God, what... Mrs Rivers. You have a visitor. Are you here today or not? Don't you recognise him? We didn't know each other from Adam. Then... It was a little boot boy from Briar. It was that look what saved me. He recognised me. He knew who I was. And I knew what I must do. In that instant. Oh, Charles. Charles, how wonderful to see you. Oh, miss? I'm not Miss Lily anymore. You're... This is a madhouse, ain't it? Do you know who I am? It's Miss Smith, ain't it? Bless you. Miss Smith, who is no, so kind. You mustn't call me that here. And how is Briar, Charles? Mr Lily had a stroke after what happened. <gasps> I'm so sorry to hear that. Gave me the creeps, he did. Mr. Way, the steward beat me so much I ran away. I've no job, no character. I wanted to find Mr. Rivers, who was so kind to me, also. He said I polished his boots better than anyone else in the whole world. And my auntie told me that Mrs. Rivers was living here, and I thought this was a grand house. Your auntie? Mrs. Cream. Where Mr. and Mrs. Rivers stayed after their wedding. Five minutes to tea, ladies. I want to see Mr. Rivers. More than anything. Everything else in the world. So do I. And Mrs. Rivers. Ladies! Ladies! Have you money? Five shillings and... Locksmith. One inch blank key. And a file. A... I must go in file now. Do come again soon, Charles. Thank you. Rivers keeps you without shoes? So I should not run away. You cannot run away from your husband. There's someone he has done a great wrong to. I must save her. I thought if I can stay at your house... My house? That's impossible, my dear. I have a wife and children. I see. Not now. Rivers is entirely to blame. Having taken you, he might at least have kept you close. 
He saw what you were. And what am I, Mr. Hawtrey? Ah, Thomas. Shall I just close that for you, sir? No, 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 no. I will, I will do this. Well, Thomas, Really, you must not. You seem to forget. I have seen much worse at Briar. Whip your backside until the blood runs down your heel. Second par down, wrong font. They've set it in Clarendon. The rest is in Garamond, I think. All right, so to him. I could work here for you. Impossible. Please. You have been kind. I think you are kind. I beg you, if you could find me some room at a hotel anywhere. It's out of the question. Blant Street was foul. It was the last place I wanted to go, but I had nowhere else. <laughs> Mrs. Saxby! I knew you'd come home. Please don't touch me, stifle me, smother me. Pretend to love me. Pretend. When Sue's Mother came here. People will tell you that that I had a baby of my own which died. At least, that's the story around here. Nobody questioned it. Babies do die in Lant Street in particular. Many a time I've sat here thinking how I'd last held you when you was a few days old. Imagining how you'd grown. shape of your nose I pictured exact. The paleness of the skin, but the hair, the hair I, I always thought would be fairer. Dear girl, my own my own dear girl. To have you back. After all these years. Ladies! Ladies! Remember, meet me at the wall.
Of all the burglars mates God could have sent me, Charles was the worst by a long chalk. Sleep. She says your hands are like poor chops. I never. That makes it smell like one. I never. Did you? I did. never. After all she my did. kindness, Becky. I never, Nurse Bacon. She did. Oh, God help us at what you've done now. Am I flesh blazing? Oh. I'll put the cream on your hands, Nurse Bacon. I'll do it, I will. Small key. Shut up, Betty. <laughs> Her Mrs. Robeshire, if you sing another bleeding verse. Just hold your foolish tongue. Why do you want to marry? You know you are too young. So sixteen, I do know that you must allow. I must get married. I never know she me going was the thought of Mrs. Saxby's face when I turned up at Lance oh, Street. Oh. And then I thought of Maud, wherever she was.
miss. Come back, miss. You took them close without asking. I did, didn't I? Did you remember you picked up? Never saw Mr. Rivers again. Don't look at me like that. I've never done anything like that before in my life. Don't you think I feel terrible? Stealing from poor people like that. Oh, damn it. I suppose you want piece of this pie then. Charles. There are times in this life we have to do things we don't want to do. I will ask Mr. Rivers to go back to that very cottage and pay every penny for things we've taken and more. Will you? Yeah, that's just the sort of thing Mr. Rivers would do. believe that in a few days time you will be 21 years old I'll make myself a cook oh thank you thank you dear who was my father Mr Ibs no, dear. Your father was a sailor. Lost at sea. Well, lost to me, dear. Hi, Miss Smith. Hi, Miss Bleeding Rivers. I'm Susan Trinder! I thought you said we were going to see Mr. Rivers. This is horrible. So this is horrible. The country's horrible. This is where I live. This place? And where is Mr. Tommy Jocelyn. Collier drinks. Oh, it's good poke. <laughs> Boy, get him. What is it? Miss Trender, what is it? Well, don't cry, miss.
Did you take that from the cottage? Why'd you take it? Why? It's because it's what I am. You're kind. You're a lady's maid. I'm a fingersmith, you stupid idiot. A thief. Yeah, well, I don't want to be a thief. I want to be with Mr Rivers. You said you promised. Mr Rivers? Mr Rivers is the biggest prig unhung. Mr Rivers, Mr Rivers got me put in a madhouse. Mr Rivers! Happy birthday, Maud. And to our absent friend, Sue. May the day bring good fortune to us all. Leave her alone, can't you? Stop baiting her. I will order Madam's carriage. Dear Mrs. Suxby, gentlemen and that bitch has cheated me and put me in the madhouse. Send a signal with this boy and help me. Half a sovereign, son. No, it's got Geneva Works. I'll open it up. Hang on. She took it. Mrs. Saxby. Miss Maud. Oh, she gave me this. Mocking me. What is it? The two of arts. <laughs> oh, mocker. Well, you gave me a pound for the watch. Come on. Who's here? Mrs. Saxby, visitor. Put it on his fingersmith and cut with the jewellery. Is that what you told him? I stole your jewellery. You've got some bleeding cheek. You near broke Mrs. Saxby's heart. Oh, oh. Give me a knife. Give me me! I've got no argument with you, John. Oh, you don't you? So dear, you ain't yourself. I ain't Mrs. Saxby. Not after what they did to me. To leave now. Y you'd like me to do that, wouldn't you? Before a gentleman gets back. You don't know what's really happened. I know you got my clothes. Even got my bleeding bangles. Why? Isn't your fortune enough? Isn't what you did to me enough? Please go. You put me in a madhouse, Mrs. Saxby. You had to put me there. I wish I had. To cheat me. To kill me. I will. I will. I will kill you. Get off my. Get off my. Come on, cow. You were down in the streets of Dow's boy. Touch me again, you'll know it. I know. I know. I never believed you cut with the jewellery. No, I went along with the others because they'd have thought me a sentimental old fool, but I knew deep down. Give me the knife, did you? I did, I did. I thought, no, not my son. You brought me up as your own daughter. I'd never see you again, but you know, I, I had a man looking for you. I knew you would. Sue. Your carriage awaits. Hello, Charles. My boots have never been the same. Sue? She's just told me what you've done to her. So you'd better go. You found me out a villain, Charles. Oh, honest to God, Mr. Rivers, I never meant to. Get out! Don't let him go! He'll go for Dr. Christie! Stay! 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 There! 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 You're all, you're all right. All right!
right now. There, 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 there. All right. Oh, damn it. Tell the poor bitch how we used her. Bridget, don't say any more. Oh, my dear wife. Have you no feelings at all? Not that I know of, but I know you have. <laughs> oh, damn it, Ma. What does it matter to you? You're a fully-fledged villain now. You don't have to care about either of them. Gentlemen, uh, will, will you? Mrs. Hatsby. Oh, now I see the resemblance. You, you see nothing, nothing. Oh, why did I never suspect it? No wonder you kicked and cursed and she let you. Oh, this is rich. Did you know Mr. Reeves? No, no, he knows nothing, no, 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 nothing. Stop it, Mrs. Hatsby. Oh, my heart. Your heart? You have a heart, Mrs. Saxby. No, feel it. I should get your daughter to do that. Oh, Grace! Oh, oh, Grace! Who did this? She done it. I saw her. Wait. What happened was, the knife was on the table. Maud started to say something think... else, but nobody heard her. I done it. Lord knows I'm sorry for it now. But I done it. And these girls here are innocent girls and never armed. No one. Maud said she had killed him. But nobody believed her. Because she was a lady. And a lunatic. Gentlemen weren't a gentleman after all. But a draper's son. Frederick Bunt. The papers said he'd been brutally cut down in his manhood, and girls put his picture next to their hearts. I didn't see Maud before she disappeared. Good job. Or I'd have probably ended up with Mrs. Suxby. Mrs. Suxby was so game when the judge put on the black cap and sentenced her to death. She always looked behind me, as if she was expecting someone else to be with me. But I wanted her for myself. Quite alone. That's good. Just you and me, as it used to be. Oh, Mrs. Saxby. What should I do without you? your eyes and Sue should you ever hear hard things of me when I am gone think back to oh, well.
We had a collection. It's not very much, but... Thank you. How is she? Gang. Thanks, Tommy. A lady to see you. She won't give her name. No one will listen to me. You must tell them. If you only came to say that, then go. I've done what I've done, and that's the end of it. You must tell them I killed them. No. I was wrong to send you away. And I was wrong to do that to a girl like Sue, a jewel. I hope she never finds out. I will never tell her. I came to see you. As well as... Did you? Of course I did. I wish. Never mind. Justice. This is Saxby's daughter, isn't it?
you. I, Marianne Lily of Bear Court. Bear Court. Sound of mind, though feeble of body, commit my infant daughter, Susan, to the guardianship of Mrs. Grace Suxby, in exchange for which Mrs. Suxby commits into my care her dear daughter, Maud. <sighs> Get some water, don't you? Go to the shop, is it, Sue? Oh, I should say so, Sammy. I should say so. Look at me, Sue. I heard that Mr. Lily had died, and so I returned to Briar to see if I could find something to show me where Maud had gone. Have you come to kill me? Oh, Maud. How could I harm you? I know everything. No. You know nothing. You don't know me at all. How delicious was the glow on her ivory shoulders as I forced her back on the couch. I scarcely knew what I was about. Everything now was in active exertion. Tongues, lips, bellies, thighs, arms, legs, bottom, every part in a voluptuous motion. They all like that. Every single one. I write it myself now. I must earn a living somehow. I'm not the good, sweet, 
girl you thought I was. This is what I am. I know you must hate me. Hate me. I don't hate you. I... I'm so sorry for what I did to you, Sue. I'm sorry. I tricked us both in. I found this in a dress. Someone read it out to me. The money's yours. Did you know who my mother was? From the very no, beginning. Not till I got to London. And Mrs. Saxby never wanted you to find out. She loved you. <gasps> she did, too. She, she said how wrong she was to try and turn a jewel like you and a, a jewel. <gasps> turn a jewel like you into a commonplace girl. I killed her. I pleaded with Mrs. Saxby to tell the truth, but all she would say was that she had done it and... And that was the end to it. I know. I miss your making of yourself, eh? Full of words saying how I want you. How? I love you.